Hi, in this video we are going to go over the solution of the problem 1095 shortest pass in a binary matrix. So imagine that I have a binary matrix like this and I want to know what is the shortest pass from the top left cell to the right bottom cell. And considering that the 0 uh, represents the empty cell and the 1 are blocked cells, so I can only move uh, over the 1s. So for example here the pass is 1 and here we have one, two, three. So for get for starting from the top left, reaching to the right, uh, bottom right. So we have we have we can take these three paths, and that is the shortest path. That is what we are looking for. And um, the other thing is that the movement can be um, vertical, horizontal, or diagonal. So let's see the solution. So we said that yeah, we have a matrix. I uh, call it grid here. So uh, and 0 is empty cell, 1 is um, block cell. And for example in this matrix, uh, so I'm going to use an analogy that I have a, a problem of a gas leak that on the top left we have a source that at the time 0 uh, the leakage starts and it can go in all directions in a constant rate and then I have a sensor on the bottom right cell in here and I want to know at what second I'm I'm going to sense that so that's that's a solution of this problem it's kind of a uh, how, how we are going to solve because we're going to start from top left to right by them and uh, like the, uh, like a leakage the, it's going to move in all direction and as soon as it reaches here that would be the minimum amount of time and minimal pass it took to reach there so um, for doing that, we are going to use the, um, the uh, BSF data structure and for doing that I need to import uh, DQ. So I go to from collections, import, import DQ. Okay, uh, let's say I have a cl uh, class um, Solution here. I put object and let me call my function shortest pass. And it has self and gets grids as input. So just to be clean, I'm going to call the number of rows of the grid by R and number of columns by capital C. So length of the grid will give me the number of rows and length of grid one first row is going to give me the number of columns. So let's um, I'm just going at the beginning put uh, one condition that uh, if you are given a matrix that has one here or one here so that is not going to be, uh, we are going to return 0 because that is the definition of the problem is not uh, correct. So we are in that case, uh, I'm going to say if grid 0, 0 um, equals 0, uh, sorry, it is not 0. It is not 0 and grid r minus 1 the right bottom ones c minus 1 is not 0 so in that case so I say okay your definition of the problem is not what you asked me so I'm just gonna return return minus 1 else if the finish of the problem is correct, so now I'm going to do something here. So I'm first of all I'm going to say whenever I visit a cell, I'm going to add a value two to that cell to make to to mark that that cell is already visited. So let me have that definition here. So in that case, so first I'm going to say first grid because now we are visiting the first grid, yeah? So we say grid 0, 
zero. We assign two to that. Then I'm going to use variable Q for my Q structure. So we say DQ and I need to append something to that. What I append to that, I'm going to append zero, zero, zero. And that's it. So let me, I can actually print um, Q here. Just for the function because I want to run it I can give it minus one so let's see what what we are doing so zero zero stands for the location of that that is a row zero column zero and this zero is the timing the timing of that because we are just starting the procedure so uh, we want to know how many seconds we go forward until we reach to this cell so that is so this is our timing that we are going to increment over time over that and uh, for now, let me just uh, run this. Um, that's our grid. So let me put an instance of the class S1 equals solution. And um, let me print S1 times uh, shortest path of the grid. So let's see if it runs. And yeah, so it's going to return minus 1 because that is what I asked. That to return but you see the Q that I have is zero 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 okay good so we have that one and then I'm going here and say I have that Q I'm going to which was which it was this one I'm going to pop left that from my Q and search around it so I say um, while Q RCD equals Q dot pop left and let me just print that that you can see what I'm printing so I can just print R, C, and um, D. So there is a one condition here that I'm going to end this while loop. So that condition is this. So I'm saying if I reach to the last cell, which is R equals capital R minus 1, And last column, which is C minus one. So I, technically, I'm saying when I, whenever I'm here. Okay. Break that. So if I'm there, that's it. So I reach that point. I don't need to continue. But before that, if any other cell I am, I'm going to go and search around it. So I'm going to say. For neighboring R, neighboring column, uh, or neighboring row, neighboring column, in what? In all cells around it. So I'm going to put eight cells, search eight cells around it, put them in this parenthesis. So one row below, one column below, one row up, one column up, and diagonal, four for diagonals elements. So you can see here. So I have these eight cells to be searched. Okay, and whenever in these cells, first of all, I need to make sure that cell that I'm searching, num and R and C are in the bounding of the matrix. For example, I cannot have something above that or out of that. So I'm going to say, okay, if um, if N R is greater than zero and less than R and um, same thing for neighboring column and here is important and grid of NR 
in C equals zero because that should be an empty cell. If that's the case, first I say, let's say I visited that grid. Assign two to that because two means we visited that. Why am I getting over here? Oh, okay. I need one more. Okay. And for that one, um, am I getting? Oh, okay, I forgot here. Okay. So I, sorry. We search. We are going to search these eight cells. If that is in the bounding, and if the value is zero, I'm going to assign the two to that, and then I'm going to append the Q with N R N C and D which I read from pop left and plus one so here for example for the first thing when we pop that out that was zero but when I'm right now adding that it seems that I'm coming here and I add that so I add an increment to D and I can actually print that that you can see what is happening okay and let me also print Q at the end of the for loop and let's run that so but this time instead of returning minus one I'm going I'm just going to return D what why because D is the one that we are that is our timer so and if we, if we do that so let's see what we get so if you remember here um, we had so we, we got to f number four so we had one two three four we have four pass uh, in the in the in the definition of the problem, it's it's it asks you to uh, put the number of cells involved in a cell of the past. So we can just put that plus one here, so to get the five cells involved. So that is five. That is our correct answer. So again, so this is a for example pass one two three blue pass, but there are four cells involved, and that problem asks you to return the number of cells in a sub number pass. So you just need to plus one at the end to the D. So that is how we can uh, pretty much solve this problem. There is only one condition that, for example, I have one, this is zero, this is zero, but there are some uh, blocked cell here that protects this empty cell from the gas uh, leaking to that. So if I have that and if I run this problem so I'm going to get 4 and it says okay that is 4 but that is wrong we, that never reached there so we have to check that so so we need another condition here we say if grid r-1 the last cell that we care about the, where we have the sensor is not to return minus one so this could handle that exception so it's gonna return minus one okay let's go over that again so see what we did to solve this problem Okay, so let me just put this thing together that you can see the matrix grid as well as the solution. Okay, so at the beginning, we said that, okay, we are going to assign 0, 0 uh, to the 0, 0 point. We are going to assign the timer 0, and that was our initial queue. This is our initial queue. And then we are going to Q uh, use the pop left and get this 0 0 D 0 and then we go and search around that so I'm here I'm searching around I get to two points this point and this point 
So you see here, I have I have zero one and one one, zero one one one, and for each one the timer now is one for both of them, because from this source at the same time it leaks here, it leaks here, and now these two cells are in the queue. So I'm going to get this one out of the queue zero one one, zero one one, this one. And that one, we say, okay, from that one, we have 0, 2 added. 0, 2 added to the um, RQ, and D is 2 for that. And we go forward until we reach to what? Until we reach to the D equals 3. That's this one. But it doesn't but it never reaches that cell that we we this is our goal so because of that we're using this condition we return minus one so imagine that I have here zero let's run it again and see what happens this time so we get that to first point we have these two added and then we pop up zero one zero one here is and then at the end this is the column yeah this is the row this one that's the final cell and D is 4 these 4 and return the number of nodes involved which is um, D plus 1 so that would be the answer to this uh, problem Okay, now uh, imagine that you have a very giant matrix, for example, something like this one. And uh, it has those 0 and 1s. And um, I'm just uh, going to show you um, what is happening. So uh, source of leak is here. So it's coming here and then comes here, comes here. It could go here, come here, come here. And at the end, it's going to go all the way to the right and down to the to this cell. So the answer, uh, the question was that what is the minimum pass? And the solution that it doesn't matter how big is our matrix, it's going to be very efficient. That uh, and see, so it's a lot of <laughs> print that I shouldn't do that. But at the end, it's 115. So it's a at this uh, that was a 100 by 100 matrix. So, and the pass that got the minimum uh, pass to that uh, from the top corner to the right corner was 115 uh, pass and 115 nodes involved. So, in that way, we can solve this problem. Uh, now, let's go over time complexity and space complexity. So, for time complexity and space complexity, both of them are uh, order of n, and n is the multiplication of the uh, capital R times capital C that R is the number of rows and C is the number of columns and um, we are going to visit each node once as you saw and search around it so that's the reason our time complex is going to be uh, order of uh, ON and also in the worst case scenario for example uh, our Q can get a little huge in a, but that never gets uh, uh, larger than the number of the um, cells in the matrix so max at the worst case scenario is going to be a order of n so this is the solution of this problem um, thank you so much uh, for watching this video